now we are told, and we come now to Christ, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, and the Lamb which has been slain. And I read here, "...and one from among the elders," I'm reading my translation, "...saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah." The root of David hath overcome to open the book and the seven seals thereof. And I'd like to say to John also, don't weep, John. If you don't find anyone in heaven that can open the book and has got all the answers, just come on here to Southern California. We got them. They'll give you the answer to all of these. Now, will you notice, evidently any one of the elders could have answered. They had a spiritual illumination. And this, I think, Father identifies them as the church. The Lord Jesus had said to his own in John 15:15, 15, 15, "...henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you." Now, the Lord Jesus Christ is the only one who has the right and title to this earth. He not only redeemed you and me, but he redeemed the earth. He is identified in this section in all his ministries that relate to the earth. Now he's called the Lion of the tribe of Judah and the Root of David. The Lion of the tribe of Judah identifies him, of course, with the tribe of Judah. That was the thing that you recall that old Jacob, when he was dying, called his twelve sons around him. Why, we find that at that time he gave a prophecy concerning Judah. And that's in Genesis 49, 9. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion and as an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. The Lord Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Now he's the root of David. In Second Samuel, the seventh chapter, that great chapter there of God's covenant with David, I'm going to break one in your line that will rule not only over these people, but over the whole earth. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ, he has the right to rule as he is the fulfillment of the prophecies made in the Old Testament relative to the future of the world. All of those prophecies will be fulfilled at his second coming to the earth to establish his kingdom. Now, I read, And behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb. We're a little confused here. We saw a lion, and now he's a lamb. Stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Now, John's still a spectator to this scene. He said, I beheld, I saw this. Now, a lamb here, the word for lamb is in the diminutive. Literally, it means a little lamb. It denotes its gentleness and its willingness to be sacrificed. He's led as a lamb to the slaughter. And he didn't open his mouth at all. That was the picture of him. He was the lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And as it had been slain... That indicates the redemptive and vicarious substitutionary death of Christ. And the emphasis is upon the fact that he was slain with violence here. And he stood. Rather, he's standing. Well, that speaks of resurrection. He's no longer seated at the right hand of God. He's moving now, and he's moving to power, and he's coming to this earth. The judgment of the tribulation is getting ready to strike the earth. The winds are already blowing on the earth. Now he's in the midst of the throne. That is indicative of the fact that he's before the throne and ready to act as the righteous judge. And seven horns denotes perfect power. Now a horn speaks of power. Turn to Daniel 7, 8. 
if you want to have a confirmation of that. He is omnipotent. And seven eyes denotes he has perfect knowledge. He's omniscient. He is the omnipotent and the omniscient God. And he moves in the fullness of the Spirit, who is the Spirit of wisdom and understanding. Now, here he is, a lion and a lamb. The lion character refers to his second coming. The lamb character refers to his first coming. The lion speaks of his majesty. The lamb speaks of his meekness. As a lion, he is a sovereign. As a lamb, he's a savior. As a lion, he is a judge. As a lamb, he is judged. The lion speaks of the government of God, and the lamb speaks of the...